The Challenge of the Yukon. It's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush, when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. In the early days of the gold rush, thousands of men were pouring into the Yukon Territory. Many of them knew nothing of the perils before them and came without proper supplies and equipment and would pay any price for a cooking pan, an axe, a sled, or a dog team. In a hideout across the border on the Alaska side, three men were discussing their way of getting rich. And it was not by panning gold. <laughs> yeah, that last job brought us in over $5,000. Counting the money old Zeb Williams was carrying in his money belt. <laughs> Hey, you sure picked a good prospect that time, Al. I watch for the ones who bring a lot of equipment with them. They usually have money, too. It's a good thing you look honest, Al. You never have any trouble picking a sucker. They think you're the soul of the earth. I don't mind that part of it. You and Frank do the rest. I don't like the rough stuff. I can hold a gun on a man to make him do what I want, but I don't like killing. <laughs> Bart and I will take care of our end of it. All you have to do is bring him from the Yukon Territory to this side of the border. We'll do the rest, including taking the equipment back and selling it again to someone who needs it bad enough to pay through the nose for it. You don't think there's any chance of the Mounties catching on to this, do you? They're too busy patrolling their own side of the border to bother with what goes on on the Alaska side. Uh, yeah, but Al gets them greenhorns from their territory. That's the Mounties' business. But when I bring them over here on the Alaska side, we don't have to worry about the Mounties. The murder committed over there is none of their business. That's what's so perfect about this scheme. What if they find out about they the They haven't any way of finding out about this hideout. As long as Al starts out on the regular trail north, no money is going to think that he'll turn off it before he reaches Klondike Build Roadhouse. And certainly no greenhorn is going to know it ain't the right way to go. Uh, you going back to town tomorrow, Al? Yes, dogs are rested. It may take a couple of weeks before I can line up another prospector with a good load of supplies. We can wait. Another one like the last one will really pay off. <laughs> it's a lot easier than grubbing for gold the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> this time I'll get a room at the Golden Moose Hotel. There ought to be good pickings up there. Al had been at the Golden Moose Hotel for three days before he saw the man who seemed to be a likely prospect. The man was young, wore an expensive new fur parka, fine boots and had on leash a wire-haired terrier. Al listened as he talked to the clerk. Are you sure there isn't any room at all? I'll pay you well. Well, I'm sorry, but we're full up. Town's overcrowded. Now, maybe if you wait around for a day or so... I must have a room. Well, I'll try the other hotels. Come on, Spock. Well, I'm sorry, mister. You are uh, looking for a room? Oh, yes, but the hotel is filled. I'll have to try somewhere else. You won't have any luck anywhere else, either. Town is packed full. Well, I'll have to find something. You uh, new in the North Country? Yes, I am. I'm planning to go to the Klondike. Um, isn't there any place in town that you know of where I could get a room? I'll have to stay here a few days to make arrangements to go north. Say, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll let you share my room with me. I wouldn't do this with most people, but you look good and honest. I got a room right here in the Golden Moose. Well, that's certainly nice of you. Uh, would you mind having Spot, too? He's gentle, and I'd like to have him with me. No, I like dogs. Bring him along. You got much baggage? Yes, I have. It's outside. I have two large packing cases full of supplies, but I'm sure the hotel will have a place for them. Sure, you can arrange for that, all right. Say, my room number is 220. You take your bags and go on up, and I'll fix things with the hotel clerk. This is really very nice of you. Oh, I, I didn't introduce myself. My name's Pete Nelson. And mine's Al James. Glad to know you. I'll join you in a few minutes. It was the following day that Sergeant Preston, with his big dog King beside him, walked along the main street of town. Suddenly, he saw a huge husky race toward a small wire-haired terrier. The big dog attacked it savagely, while the young man tried desperately to stop it. The Monty ran in to help. Stop it! Get back there! Let's go, I say! I'll stop them! Get back there! Get back! 
Grab your dog. Get him away. I'll hold this one. I've got him. Come on, Spock. Quiet down now. That's my dog, Sergeant. He slipped his collar. He almost killed that little dog. Oh, me, I, I'm sorry. Come on, Blackie, get back here. I take care of him, Sergeant. All right, Andre. Come on. I fixed that collar of yours this time. Your dog hurt much? I'm afraid he is. Oh, I'm glad you came along. One more minute and that husky would have killed him. Now, let's have a look at him. Easy, little fella, easy now. Oh, that's a bad tear. He'd better be fixed up right away. I just have a small room at the hotel and the man's sharing it with me. I don't think I can take him there. I'll tell you what you can do. Bring him over to the police barracks, and I'll have the vet fix him up for you. And uh, maybe we'd better let him stay there in the kennels till he's better. Oh, that's nice of you, Sergeant. He's badly torn and bleeding so much. He'll have to have care. Come on. <laughs> we'll get him over there right away. Al James waited for Pete back at the hotel room. He had been careful the night before not to seem too curious about him. But the big packing cases that Pete had brought with him and his apparent wealth made Al impatient to get started on the trip north. When Pete returned after leaving his dog with Sergeant Preston, Al looked up casually. Hello, Al. Well, did you get everything set? Think you can start north with me tomorrow? I'm sorry, Al. I won't be able to go with you tomorrow. What? Why not? On account of Spot. He was hurt. Oh, I wonder where that fancy pooch of yours was. What happened to him? Big sled dog got loose and almost killed him. You were crazy to bring a little dog like that up here. He's just a good mouthful for those huskies we have. I wouldn't trade Spot for all the huskies in the North Country. Where is he now? Amati stepped in and stopped the fight. He took Spot over to the police barracks. They think they can save him. But he's badly chewed up. It means I won't be able to leave here for at least a week. You'd better not wait for me. Why don't you just put him out of his misery? You can't let a dog spoil your plans. Living in town is expensive. You're wasting valuable time. Spot means more to me than money and time. You don't seem to have to worry much about expense, do you? Not as much as most people. Well, why come up here to look for gold, then? Most people come up to get rich. I didn't come up to look for gold. You didn't? Well, how about all those supplies you brought in those boxes? I brought medicine, cooking utensils, blankets, and other things. Enough to live on for a year. Well, what are you going to do? I didn't tell you before, Al. I was afraid you wouldn't understand. I'm a writer. A writer? Yes, I want to do a novel on the North Country. I came up here for atmosphere. Well, there's plenty of that up here. It's too cold for most people. Is uh, being a writer the reason you're always scribbling something in that little red book? Yes, I, I use this notebook to take notes about things and people I might want to use in my novel. Oh, I see. Well, being a writer, you uh, aren't used to roughing it much, are you? No. That's why I wanted to travel with you. You're used to handling dogs, and you know the country. Now I'll have to buy a sled and dog team myself, I suppose, and hire a guide. Well, I guess I could wait for you. If you think your dog will be better in a week, I'm not in a hurry exactly. Oh, I'd appreciate it if you did wait. You have such a large sled and dog team, and you know the country so well. It'd be a big help to me. I'll be glad to pay your expenses here at the hotel until we leave. Well, that'll cost you quite a lot of money. Oh, I have plenty. Well, then I'll wait. It'll be kind of a new experience for me, trailing around with someone like you. <laughs> it was a streak of luck meeting you, Al. From what you've told me about the North Country, I'd have a hard time traveling alone. I know the North Country about as well as anyone you could find. Aren't you even going to try to find a claim? No, I'm just going to write. But I'd rather people didn't know it. I want to live alone and not be bothered. That's why I brought enough supplies up here to last a year. I didn't tell anyone back home where I was going, and I'm not going to write any letters. I just told them not to expect any word from me at all. Say, uh, do you know the Mountie who took your dog? No. He's just going to keep Spot until he's well enough to travel. They put him in the kennels at the barracks. They'll let me come and see him whenever I want to. It was the third night that Pete had gone to Sergeant Preston's cabin. The Monty always took him to the kennels to see Spot, but this evening, as the door opened, he heard a familiar bark. <coughs> oh, hello, Pete. I have a surprise for you. Was that Spot barking? Oh, Spot, old boy, how are you, fella? <laughs> I went over to the kennels to see him today, and he seemed lonesome, so I brought him back here for a while. He's getting along fine. Oh, this is certainly nice of you, Sergeant. I didn't think he'd get well so quickly. He's not back to normal yet. Can't walk very well, but he'll be all right in a few days. Isn't King jealous of him? Well, he was when I brought him in, but they're good friends now. King seems to know that he needs help. He's learned Spot's name. Watch this. Here's his collar, King. Take it to Spot. 
Take it to spot, fella. <laughs> He's doing it. Good boy. Oh, this is a smart dog you have, Sergeant. I thought Spot was intelligent, but I didn't think he'd learn a name that quickly. No, King has seen him before this. I took him with me, and I went to the kennels each day. Do you think it'll be all right if I hold Spot on my lap for a while? <laughs> he won't let me leave. Certainly. Sit down. <laughs> all right. Here, Spot. That's it. Oh, I'll baby you for a while. <laughs> the little devil, he wants sympathy. Some dogs are like children. When they're sick, they want all the attention they can get. All right, now, lie still. It's a fine little dog you have there, Pete. He has a lot of nerve. Sick as he is, he wasn't at all afraid of King. That's the trouble with him. He doesn't know his limitations. When that husky came for him the other day, he should have turned and run instead of standing his ground the way he did. Those terriers have plenty of spunk. You'll have to watch him up here, though, Pete. He's no match for these dogs. I hope he's learned a lesson, but I doubt it. I guess I shouldn't have brought him. But I've had him since he was four weeks old, oh. and, well, I've taken him everywhere. You planning to do some prospecting? No, Sergeant. I'm a writer. I'm planning to do some stories about the North. Oh. I might even want to use you and King in some of them, if you don't mind. We'd be flattered. I already have some notes about you in my notebook. I even drew some sketches of King. You want to see them? Oh, well, yes, I'd like to. Here's the book. The sketches are on the last pages. Oh, oh. yes, here they are. Well, they're good. Are you an artist, too? No, not good enough to do it professionally. Who's this uh, sinister-looking person here at the bottom of the page? I hope that's not your idea of me. Oh, no. Well, that's Al, uh -huh. the man who's taking me north with him. He's really not as bad as he looks. He has a good dog team and sled and can carry all my supplies. When are you planning to leave? Just as soon as Spot can travel. Oh, well, that'll be about three days. You know where you're going? I want to go up to the Klondike. That's where Al's going. You'll take the trail straight north. It's a rough trip with winter coming on. I expect that. But adventure is what I came for, and I should meet some colorful people. There's one man you should meet. He can give you a lot of ideas. He's an experience in himself. You will meet him, too, because you'll stop at his roadhouse on the trail, oh, probably the third night. His name's Klondike Bill. Klondike Bill. He'll tell you stories about this country just as long as you'll listen to him. You'll get plenty of material from him. I'm glad you told me about him, Sergeant. I'll plan to stay at his roadhouse for two or three days if he's that interesting. Your traveling companion might not want to waste the time. Oh, Al won't care as long as I pay the expenses. He's waiting a whole week for me. He planned to leave three days ago. Most of the men break their necks to get up there as fast as they can before all the gold claims are taken. You're lucky to find someone like Al. I think so, too. Well, I guess I'd better take Spot back to the kennel and not waste any more of your time. Do you think I can take him out day after tomorrow? Oh, I think Spot could ride on the sled for a few days. It was certainly lucky for us that you came along when you did, Sergeant. I don't know how to thank you for all this. Glad to do it, Pete. I'll have Spot here day after tomorrow for you. Oh, uh, I'd like to see you again before you go. That'll be fine. I'll come here for him then. Come on, Spot. We'll go back to the kennel. A few days later, Pete had called for Spot at Sergeant Preston's cabin and left for the north. It was that evening when the sergeant and Corporal Green, with whom he shared the cabin, were preparing for bed that King picked up a small notebook from behind a chair and brought it to the Monty. What is it, King? What'd you find? Give it to me, fellow. Where'd you find that? The notebook. Pete's notebook. Must have fallen out of his pocket when he called for Spot this morning. He left for the north, didn't he? Yes, he did, and this notebook's important to him. Did he leave a forwarding address, do you suppose? I'm afraid not. He wasn't sure just where he was going to live. Oh, well, maybe he'll write you for it and tell you where to send it. There's just a chance I might be able to catch him at Klondike Bill's roadhouse on the way north. I told him about Bill and suggested he spend a few days with him to get some local color for his <laughs> novel. <laughs> sure. You'll get it there all right. <laughs> you starting north tomorrow? Yes, more reports have come in about missing people, Corporal. Started a few months ago with a man named Zeph Williams. Seems he started for Dawson to join his nephew and never got there. Since then, there have been several more similar cases. The inspector seems to think they're being waylaid on the trail somewhere and their supplies and money stolen. Well, maybe part of Soapy Smith's crowd is moving up here from the Skagway Trail. They haven't tried anything like that on this side of the border, Corporal. They seem to feel a little safer when they're out of our territory. Do you think there's a chance they might be making short raids over the border and then going back? Well, they could easily do that. If we taken care of that now. What do you mean? It's a new order out, Corporal. The Northwest Mounted has been given permission to cross the border into Alaska Territory if necessary. Oh, that should help us a lot. I think the first place I'll check for these people is Klondike Bills. 
A trail from here to his roadhouse is near the border. It branches away from the border from there on. If Pete stays over to get better acquainted with Bill, I'll catch him day after tomorrow. Klontak Bill shook his grizzled head and aimed a stream of tobacco juice accurately into the tall brass cuspidor that stood near the stove in his roadhouse. Jumping snake, Sergeant. I can't remember the people who come into this place. They most all look the same, dirty, mad, and cussing the country. Most of them too tired to sit and listen to a good yarn. I can't tell you how many have come through here during the past few months. Too many to take off, I know that. But there's one man on this list I'm sure you'd remember, Bill. His name's Pete Nelson. Young man in his 20s, clean-shaven. Has a small white dog with him, a wire-haired terrier. Well, I ain't seen any dog like that around here. I told Pete to be sure and talk to you, Bill. I know he meant to stop here. He wanted to hear some stories about the North, and I knew you could tell him some. You bet I could, Sergeant. No, sir, he didn't stop here. I'd have remembered him if it was yarns he wanted to hear. I ain't had a chance to tell any lately. Huh? Started one last night, and after about two minutes, everybody was asleep, and <laughs> I was talking to myself. I was telling about the time I was up in the Wildcat Holler. It was more than five I'm, years uh, ago. I'm afraid I'm going to have to wait a while to hear that one, Bill. I'm worried about Pete. Don't see that you can do much about him. Might as well sit and wait. Maybe he'll show up. Now, as I was saying... I was up in the wild. I uh, came over the trail after he did, Bill, so there's no possibility of that. Well, uh, maybe he didn't come north at all. No, I he... know he came north. Come on, gang. <laughs> Only thing I can do is go back over the trail and search the country between it and the border. In the meantime, Pete and Al James were mushing steadily west. The day had been sultry and cloudy, but toward the afternoon the sky had cleared, and Pete looked puzzled as he noticed the setting sun ahead of him. Al, are you sure we're going in the right direction? Of course oh. I'm sure. I know this country like the palm of my hand. But we're headed due west. The sun is setting straight ahead. We'll be heading north again soon. There's a turn in the trail about five miles ahead. Now you just let me worry about this, Pete. We should have come to Klondike Bill's Roadhouse by this time. What do you know about Klondike Bill's Roadhouse? I was anxious to meet Bill. I was told he'd give me lots of ideas for my novel. You should have told me that long ago. I'm taking a different trail, a shortcut. We won't get the bills at all going this way. Well, let's go back then and go the other way. I want to meet him. Now, it's too late now. I'm not losing time going back to listen to that old windbag. You'll find plenty more like him up where we're going. After all, I should have something to say about this. I'm running this trip from now on, kid. You're just sitting back and following orders. I'm afraid I don't agree with you. When we started out, the agreement was that you... Spot jumped off the sled. Stop, Al. Spot, come back here. Oh, hold on, oh. Fool dog saw that rabbit run by. He's chasing it. He shouldn't be running like that. He'll open up his wound. Spot, come back here. No use trying to get him back. He's out of sight. I must get him. I'm going after Listen, him. Listen, you're staying right where you are. We're not waiting any longer for that fancy two-bit dog of yours. If he can't catch up with us, we'll be good riddance. Come on. I'm not going, Al. Neither are you. No. You see this? What? Get on that sled. You're riding from here on. Gun. Well, what are you doing? Get on that sled and stay there. No monkey business. But, Al, what's the meaning of this? You said you weren't in any hurry. You're going with me and you're not asking any questions. Get on that sled. I'm going to get my dog back. Try it. Try walking away from here and I'll shoot. All right. I guess you would. I'd be a fool to take a chance. I'll get on the sled. And when we make camp tonight, don't get any notions about sneaking away in the dark. You'd be lost in less than an hour. Without food or a pack, it'd be about the best way a tenderfoot could pick to commit suicide. Mush! Mush! Get along there! Pete's wire-haired terrier, Spot, had pursued the white rabbit for over a mile. He was exhausted and weak, but kept on with all the spirit and tenacity of his breed. And then as the small dog neared the main trail, he felt a searing pain, and blood stained the white fur on his shoulder as the old wound opened. He felt himself growing weaker and stopped to lick the wound. When he tried to walk again, he staggered, and knowing he'd get no farther, crept to a thicket near the trail. 
It was the following morning when Sergeant Preston, driving his team back from Klondike Bill's Roadhouse, stopped the dogs when King left the trail barking. Hold oh, yeah. oh, yeah. What's wrong, King? You find something? What? A spot. Oh, poor little fella, you're half frozen. Wonder how you got here. No sign of peace. There's blood on the snow. No wonder yours has been bleeding. Wonder if you ran away from Pete and couldn't get back. Now, come on, Spot. You're going for a ride on my sled. We'll find out where those tracks of yours started. Come on, King. Sergeant Preston, following the trail of Spot, soon reached the place where the dog had left the sled. It led toward the hills, and the Monty continued his pursuit. Darkness was falling, and he was about to make camp. He had stopped his dog team when, suddenly, Spot began to bark and pull on the leash that held him. King's ears pricked forward, and then Sergeant Preston heard a cry ahead. Help! Help me! Quickly, the Monty drove his team ahead. On King! On your A man was staggering beside the trail in the snow. He stopped as he heard the dog shoot. Okay, tell you, Huskies. Wait, Pete. Pete! This is Sergeant Preston. Can't you see me, Pete? No, I... I'm snow blind. Oh, I'm so glad you came. Now here, come over and sit on the sled. What happened to you? Where's Al? I got away in the middle of the night after we camped. How did you find me? That bark should tell you. Spot. Spot, old fellow. Where did you find him, Sergeant? We found him near the trail. Sit here now while I bandage your eyes. You should never try to get away with no equipment. You'd have frozen to death tonight. I guess that's why Al didn't bother to come after me. He took everything away from me when we camped. Oh? He wouldn't let me go back after Spot when Spot chased a rabbit. When we camped, I sneaked away. But it was hard to follow the trail in the dark. I didn't get very far. Then the glare from the snow blinded me after the sun came up. Al took my goggles, too. Lucky thing for you that Spot decided to chase that rabbit. I was trying to find your trail leading away from the main trail. Spot made things a lot easier. I knew Al wasn't taking the right direction. His trail leads to the border. Must be over it by now. There. Now, leave that bandage over your eyes. I'll be all right by morning, I think. Thank you, Sergeant. I suppose if Al has gone across the border, there's no hope of catching him. He took all my money and equipment. If you're better by morning, we're going to continue right on his trail. I have an extra pair of goggles you can wear. I'd like to go with you, Sergeant. I'm sure my eyes will be all right. The following day, Sergeant Preston and Pete followed the trail of Al that led through the hills across the border. Daylight was fading when they approached a long valley, and the Monty stopped his dog team at the top of the hill that led to it. Looking! Oh, yes, do you see something, Sergeant? Yes, please. Look over there to the left. There's smoke coming up behind those trees down in the valley. Uh-huh. There's a cabin there somewhere. I'm going to look through my binoculars. It's a lucky thing that you noticed. They could have spotted us coming down the hill, even in this light. Cabin, all right. They won't go any farther yet, Steve. I want to watch that cabin for a while. There's about an hour of daylight left. By watching, we may be able to find out how many men are there. I suppose they intended to kill me after we got here. Yes, I think that's what happened to the others who disappeared. Our problem is to get to that cabin without being seen and get into it after we reach it. We can sneak down there after dark. No, the sled dogs would warn them. They're tied to one side of the cabin there. Oh, I didn't think of that. Pete, I may have to use you after all, but you'll be risking your life. You saved my life, Sergeant. The least I can do is risk it for you. (laughs) Maybe I can be the hero of my own novel. Darkness had fallen, and the small cabin in the valley was lighted by a lantern that stood on the rough table. Al, Frank, and Bart had finished their supper, but continued the argument that had lasted through the meal. I still say you should have gone back and found that tenderfoot. If somebody finds his body, they're sure to trail us. What's the use of arguing about it? Al didn't go back after him, and no amount of talk is going to help I tell you, I couldn't. I had all that slow to stuff on a sled. I couldn't go chasing him without tiring the dogs too much to get here with it. Well, we better move out of here. That's all I got to say. I still don't see how you let him get away, Al. I was tired, and when I was sure he was asleep, I went to sleep myself. I took everything away from him. Didn't even have any matches. If he tried to travel without goggles in that glare yesterday, he must have gone sunblind. Oh. Al's right, Bart. He couldn't get very far with no food or matches. 
sun was too bright yesterday for a tenderfoot without goggles on that trail. If he's a writer, he probably knows that. He doesn't know anything about the North Country, I tell you, and I was careful not to tell him anything. Hey, listen. What's wrong with the dogs? Hey, maybe somebody's coming. Hey, you see, I told you. Al, put a coat in front of that lantern while I sneak out the door. I don't want a light behind me. Right. You got your gun? Certainly. You think I'm crazy? I got the lantern covered. Go ahead. What? Hey, that sounds like Pete. Who is it? Al. Al, is that you? It is Pete Frank. That's the tenderfoot. Let him in. He must have followed me here. No tricks, you. I've got a gun on you. Please. Please let me in. I I haven't eaten for two days. Now, wait a minute. Now, let me make sure you're not packing a gun. Al knows I'm not. How did you get here? After I left you, I, I realized I couldn't make it alone. I followed your trail, but I I couldn't catch you. Let him in, Frank. Go on in. Sit down here. Get him some brandy, Bart. What's the use of wasting brandy on him? Bart's right. You won't need any brandy. <laughs> well, boys, I guess we can relax now. There's nothing to worry about. I told you that all along. Well, Bart, I guess the next piece of business is yours. Yeah. But on your feet, you. What? Get up. What? We're going outside. What are you going to do? Come on, on your feet. You... You mean you're going to kill me? <laughs> no. He's just going out to give you some lessons in target practice. I guess you should have stayed in the hills, Pete. Freezing would have been easier. This is a lot quicker. Come on, get going. <laughs> Al, can't you help me? Yeah, I'll bury you. I get going. Hurry up and get it over with, Bart. Yeah, we're going. <laughs> they were sure lucky for us. He must have had a hard time getting here. I'm glad shooting him is Bart's job. He was kind of a nice fellow. Ah, you're too soft. It's a good thing we have Bart to handle the tough part of this, Bart. Well, that's over with. We can bury him in the morning with the rest of them. <laughs> we're going to have quite a cemetery before we're through. Hey, good work, Bart. You don't... Of Why, what? You're under arrest. Oh, no, we're not. You... Oh, oh, hold it. Hand. Get away. Get away. Get this dog off me. Get away from me. Help. Hold him there, King. Get... Watch him, boy. Sergeant, are you all right? Yes, please. Man tried to pull a gun on me, but King got him. Pete, but, but Bart. Uh, sergeant said... Preston was waiting outside, Al. When I came out with Bart, the sergeant took care of him with the butt of his pistol. The shot you heard was fired into the air for your benefit. Get over here. I'm handcuffing you two together. Back, King. I have his gun, boy. Get up, you. Shall I drag Bart into the cabin, Sergeant? I'll help you just as soon as these two are handcuffed. There. That'll take care of them. Watch them, boy. Oh, we got the other one. Yes, King. This case is closed. The Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature, is a George W. Trendle production, directed by Fred Flowerday and written by Mildred Merrill. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. All names and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next week to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. Fred Foy speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. In the growing fight against juvenile delinquency, radio has made a lot of valuable contributions. One of the programs that combats juvenile delinquency is ABC's Sunday afternoon drama, David Harding, Counterspy. Counterspy was recently praised by Miss Helen Parkhurst, the well-known pioneer in progressive education. Children identify themselves with good characters like David Harding, and as a result, come a step closer toward developing into responsible citizens. Children enjoy this program, because they delight in the many surprises and twists of such a clean, well-motivated mystery. Each episode on this fast-moving program is carefully thought out and planned and keeps abreast of current problems. For drama tackling real, immediate situations and for downright entertainment, don't miss tomorrow afternoon's David Harding...